Hey y'all, Terry May here, and this time I'm doing a sort of double movie review. I'm going to be reviewing The Church and the Sect. Now, uh, curiously, in Japan, those of you familiar with the Italian Liberto Baba Demons movies that was produced by Dario Argento, um, would know those movies do have a few sequels. In Japan, these movies are considered sequels to Demons. The Church is considered uh, Demons 3. The sect is considered Demons 4, um, interestingly enough. Now, Michel Suave brought both of these movies, and he was actually Argento's protege for a while, and he can be seen in the first Demons movie giving out the tickets, and he also appears in the movie that the moviegoers are watching unfold before them as the events sort of seem to, you know, take place. Um, Shameless put these out on Blu-ray. They were limited to about 3,000 apiece, I believe. And uh, I got these off Amazon UK. I do have a region free player, so uh, I'm not really restricted in that way to the region codes. Uh, Michelle Suave was a very interesting director. Unfortunately, his career was kind of cut short due to um, unfortunate circumstances. I believe with a sick child, his son perhaps. So he really didn't bring us a lot of movies. He did one called Stage Fright that was excellent. He did um, The Cemetery Man, a lot of you know, uh, Delamore Ted Delamore, I believe it's also known as. And he also, like I said, he brought these two movies, The Church and the Sect. Now, The Church kind of is about, there's a lady, she's restoring a painting in a Gothic cathedral in Germany, and there's a librarian. At some point, they discover a scroll in the, uh, I believe it's in the basement or, you know, something like that. I forget exactly how it, you know, in the beginning you get some kind of medieval looking scenes and stuff like that. Uh, you've got Aja Argento as a child in this. Um, and there's just a lot of bizarre, nightmare-like events that take place. And some of it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense right away. It just seems like heightened and manic and kind of crazed. They do wind up a lot of people, uh, including some people on a photo shoot for like a wedding thing. They all get trapped in this cathedral at some point. And as the um, kind of the frenzy and the terror gets worse you see more and more bizarre things strange like visions nightmares just you know bizarre in terms of event at one point there's sort of like what the cover shows a demon kind of made you know sleeping with a lady and there's like a cult around them the whole time sort of worshiping it and stuff like that it is a very uh, visual movie and it is very interesting and I'll read the back of this to you so that uh, you get a better understanding Succumb to the orgies of diabolic lust and merciless slaughter with Shameless's premier 2K restored, HD remastered, and longest ever version of this long disappeared horror classic, The Church. Um, in medieval times, religious knights massacre a village of witches and build a cathedral on top of their mass grave. In present days, the church's librarian, Thomas Verana, accidentally unleashes the evil which had laid under the edifice since the massacre. This sets off mechanisms built into the infrastructure which traps the priests and churchgoers who fall prey to the waking demons and satanic spirits. With a hypnotic brooding score from the genius of Keith Emerson, Philip Glass, and Goblin, Suave ramps up the horror to a soul-searing 666 before an apocalyptic climax. And uh, this is definitely, definitely worth checking out. It is um, a very kind of strange feeling movie and stuff. And... You, you do have to kind of pay attention to it as things will just kind of go on, you know, 100 miles an hour sometimes and just take all these twists and turns and stuff like that. But yes, I highly recommend that movie. A uh, nice piece of Italian cinema right there. And then The Sect is probably almost more nightmarish and it is sort of a twisted Alice in Wonderland-esque type film. Uh, near the beginning, the lady, she kind of hits this guy um, you get these kind of crazed hippie people in the beginning that get slaughtered by this um, Manson looking fellow and later on this some stuff I guess is kind of coming from that uh, I don't want to spoil stuff so I'm, I'm being a bit vague I'm sorry anyway uh, when she hits this man she kind of winds up taking him home he doesn't want to go to the hospital and it turns out that her house is on some sort of power source and this man was actually perhaps even seeking this out so he starts a sort of uh, set of events that bring about the sort of demon. And you see the bird pecking here. And again, you kind of got visions, nightmares, strange occurrences. 
and a lot of more WTF moments, and at times you're going to be like, what am I even watching? But I want to tell you it is worth checking out. It is definitely, definitely one of his more visual films. Um, everyone who has watched any Michel Suave ones knows how visual of a director he was. Um, maybe even more than Argento could be at times. But uh, the back of this one says, my compliments on the quality. Satanic Sacrifice, Face Ripping Gore, and a Channel Hopping Bunny. Directed by Michelle Suave of The Church and Cemetery Man, and co scripted and produced by Dario Argento. We know the names, let's experience the nature of their games. Watch with glee while school teacher Kelly Curtis, uh, that's right, Kelly Curtis, who is Jamie Lee Curtis's sister, becomes the target of a devil worshipping sect. Soon her friends either disappear before crazed zombie like murderers or get their heart ripped out, still beating. Some even jerk back to life in an undead bloodletting frenzy. Is Jamie Lee Curtis's pretty sister losing her mind, or has the devil come into her? Um, yes, definitely, definitely a fun watch. And uh, I'd recommend watching that, you know, with people even, because it's just fun to enjoy that, uh, be able to kind of banter about what is this movie about, what's going on here. And watching the commentaries and interviews on that from Michelle Suave is very fascinating. It really helps you to understand and appreciate the movies a lot better, what he had to say about it, what his um, message kind of was the way he was feeling about certain things. And like I said, the set is very Alice in Wonderland-like. I do think it's interesting. I mean, it is about demons, but it's interesting that they got touted as uh, demon sequels. They really have little to do except for maybe the isolated feel that they, you know, and the fact that they have a demon at all, um, to do with the original demons movies. But then if you've seen 34, 5, 6, you would know that those movies really have little to do. They just kind of got tagged on there to be kind of sold in that franchise. So yes, I would definitely recommend checking out these two. If you can get a hold of the Shameless ones, they are great copies. They're uh, nice. They got nice features on them. Hopefully y'all can see those. Mm -hmm. Alright, so yeah, check those out. And uh, if you like this, hit a like, subscribe, follow me on uh, Twitter if you want to, and um, I'll be happy to answer any questions there. That's Tara May 79, T A R A M A 79. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you soon.